Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Okay, we have a lot of stories to cover today. There's a lot, a lot of updates and some new information that's come out. So let's just jump in and start covering all of this. And some of it may seem to drag a little, but there's a good method to my madness. Okay, so just hang in there. Let's jump in with both feet. Let's go. This is the first thing, and I'm just going to touch on it. I told you guys in a previous video that they called Harry Bunker Harry. And the reason for that was because when the queen decided that he could go to Afghanistan, the upper echelon of the army had to come up with a way to guarantee his safety. That's why he had his own security personnel and they had like a safe area to take him to. So when the Taliban attacked, he was not in danger. Now, if you read this article, Major Crichton confirmed in the article that Harry was on the base but was never in any danger because they had measures, they'd taken measures to protect him. And it goes on to say that once they knew the perimeter had been breached, Harry was taken to a secure location under guard. Yeah, would be that the rest of the soldiers got that kind of protection. All right, moving on. We've all heard of Bot Sentinel, and this guy is claiming he's found all these algorithms and, you know, a coordinated hate attack. Well, this is interesting because this is a European consulting firm that found a highly connected Twitter hive that's attacking journalists who cover the royals. Hmm. Journalists that write about the royals for major British outlets like the Telegraph and the Express were finding themselves under assault on social media if they wrote anything about Meghan Markle. They were accused of racism, being naive, bullying. One of the um, people, according to the article, had to call the police because threats were made to relatives. So the head of the 89 Up which is a European consulting firm that has done social media research for the British Parliament and none of his work has ever been discredited by somebody else, like somebody else's work. He uh, decided to jump into it and take a look. So he used data tools and software and he tracked keywords like Duchess of Sussex and hashtags that included Markle and they were able to find interconnections Interestingly enough, they found over 1,100 highly concentrated Twitter accounts in a network who share contents about the Duchess of Sussex obsessively. Very interesting. They also found that of those 1,100 accounts, many have unusual features that suggest there's collusion or automation behind the accounts. Many appear to be cyborgs, so there are accounts that automatically retweet like-minded messages and respond to keywords and phrases. He said, essentially, they're roving Twitter gangs that find a tweet about Megan. They rally the troops, they stoke the fires, and suddenly there's a hailstorm of abuse coming your way. So why am I bringing all of this information up? Well, several articles have come out recently. As you can see above, here's one by the Steeple Times. If you haven't read it, you should. We had this article from Twitter saying it's getting better at detecting and removing bots. I, I think they're working on it. And of course, we have this statement directly from Twitter that says that Bot Sentinel doesn't really work. It's not accurate. Now, I reminded you guys not that long ago that Duke Silvertongue put out a new blog. And in this blog, as you can see below, he's talking about Twitter and Bot Sentinel. Interestingly enough, Twitter called Bot Sentinel toxic and said that any representation made about Twitter accounts on the website is based solely on the opinion and judgment of Mr. Boozy, not codes or algorithm, which makes it poisonous to the public discourse on any topic. Now, for those that say, oh, Bot Sentinel was in, in, involved in the Amber Heard case, it was. It absolutely was. But the report was dismissed by the court because they said it had unsuitable research due to its lack of academic structure and lack of evidence. Yeah, the report wasn't even considered. I, I wonder if he even got paid for it since the court refused to use it. And that leads us to this article, which is the interview that I gave to Input Magazine. And I stand by every word that I said. However, the guy that did it did one thing that, mm, I'm not sure what I think about it. 
he split my words up, if you understand what I'm saying. So look at this statement that I made, that there has been more racial division be since the two of them got married than there's ever been as far as I can tell. And that statement by itself doesn't read very well. But now add it with the other statement that I made together and not split them up. And what do you have? The statement is, there has been more racial division because the two of them got married than there has ever been, as far as I can tell. Because people get upset because they don't like being told they're a racist just because they're white. I've never seen anybody cause as much division and strife as Megan has. That was my full statement, and I stand by it. You can't go around screaming racism at everybody just because they don't like you or they don't like something you're doing. And, and now the word racism has been so watered down that when there really is actual forms of racism, nobody's paying attention. Really, it's terrible. All right, moving on. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Neil Sean gave a warning about Megan's podcast. A lot of feminists have apparently questioned how Megan can be a front for the feminist movement when she herself gave up her career, her religion, her family, and her country to marry a man, and that the only way she social climbed up was through marriage. She's trying to jump on another bandwagon, that she's trying to attach herself to the feminist bandwagon. And according to Neil Sean, it's going to backfire because prominent feminists are coming out against Meghan Markle herself. It's being stated that a lot of female leaders in the UK, and I'm sure some in the United States, are saying that this is just going to be another whiny podcast from women, basically saying they're the underdog, when the truth is women now more than ever have a bigger say, they're more powerful, there are more women CEOs in the world than ever before, you know, I like, what is this? Now, because there has not been a lot of interest in her podcast, she has redone a trailer and the trailer that was just released. Now there's male voices on there going, she's a slut. She's emotionally unstable. They're making derogatory remarks about women in the trailer. And then Megan follows up by saying, this is how we talk about women. These are the words that raise little girls. This is how the media reflects back to us. And you can hear the voice saying in the background, they're weaker, they're smaller, they're less intelligent. With Megan then saying, people think I should be quiet and submissive. Yeah, so they've redone the podcast. The truth is people don't talk like that anymore and, and it's not gonna help her, I don't think. All right, moving on. All right, you guys, we've already seen the story that Harry and Meghan are not going to be having a meeting with the royal family. They're not staying in the palaces. And apparently the king and the princess Marguerite, they are attending the opening and the closing ceremonies only. Now, since nobody there is allowed to carry weapons except government officials like police, military, military etc., nobody else is allowed to carry weapons. So that's why their private guards can't carry the weapons. However, they're claiming in this article that um, Harry and Meghan might hope to, quote, hitch a ride on the armed security uh, given to the uh, king and his aunt when they're there at the Invictus Games. Now, you guys should know that um, they share intelligence, and just like the UK, they're saying that there is no credible threats against them. But of course, you know, I think they want the whole royal treatment with the guards and the five cars and everything. All right, moving on. Now, in the middle of this, I want to put out what Susan Hornsby said. Several Ukrainian athletes will not be participating because they were killed in the war. So what we don't care to see right now is Meghan Markle flouncing around in her expensive clothes, being filmed and photographed, you know, while the war is going on and people's worlds are falling apart. I completely agree. And here is a comment from somebody who's Dutch that says that Harry and Meghan are neg negatively portrayed in the news there. They're called hypocrites because family is very important in Holland, especially the elderly. And so they've chosen the wrong country for their PR disaster and money grabbing scams. You know, that makes me wonder seriously what kind of reception they're going to get. I'm sure the people that are, you know, the athletes will give them a great reception. But what about everybody else? I don't think it's going to be all that in a bag of chips. All right, moving on. All right, this next story I found interesting. Apparently, in the publicity for the events this month, the two hosts, Alex Jones and J.J. Chalmers, avoided any mention 
of Meghan and Harry. Apparently, one of them has hosted several times before. One of them is a previous contestant who's now um, hosting, and they gushed about the games and never mentioned Harry once. Interesting. All right, moving on. All right, you guys know how I love Australian news. Interesting that Aussie host Carl, I hope I'm saying this right, Stefanovic, said that he can't stand to even look at Harry and Meghan after they had the nerve to request private armed security guards on their first trip to Europe since Megxit. I think the reason people are upset is because they're going to be one hour away from the Queen and her 96th birthday is coming up and apparently they have no plans to hop over, see the Queen, and then go home. They're just going to ignore the queen. And I mean, which I don't, I get it. They don't have any more use for her. She's on, he's pulling a Meghan Markle. You use somebody, you toss them away. That's exactly what's going on here. This next story doesn't surprise me because we know that Harry is friends with Joe Biden, that apparently uh, the U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete, oh my goodness, I'm going to try to say this name, Buddy Gage will lead the delegation to Prince Harry's Invictus Games that was announced by the White House. So if everybody was wondering how everybody is going to get there and it's not going to cost Harry and Meghan anything, that's how. The article goes on to say that the White House claimed that this gentleman and his husband, Chastin, will be at The Hague for the event. And he will be there for the opening ceremony and he will speak at a welcoming event for the U.S. team. Now, for those of you who don't know, this man ran for, um, he did a presidential bid in 2020 and um, it didn't work. And now he's considering running again. Yeah, no wonder Harry and Meghan are hitching to his wagon. Um, now, he is a Naval Reserve officer and he was in Afghanistan. All good. I get it. And that makes sense because I was wondering what a U.S. transportation person where does he fit into going over there and, and speaking at the games? He's got nothing to do with it. But there you go. He's, he's a past presidential runner. He's going to try again. And he's going to give Harry, Megan, and probably everybody a free lift over there. Interesting. All right, moving on. All right, we're moving on to our last story for today. Megan and Harry announced that they have now partnered with two new companies. Oh, <laughs> listen to this. They're partnering with Cortico's Local Voices Network, which collaborates with MIT Center, wait, listen, for Constructive Communication and the Institute for Rebooting Social Media. Wow, word salad, because they're looking to create an online community rooted in e equity, safety, participation, and belonging, because say, they say they don't trust basic information. They might want to get that information out to the Sussex squad. Because that ain't what's happening here. Now remember, they already have partnered with the UCLA Center for Critical Internet Inquiry, Color of Change, and URL Media because they're trying to, quote, improve the digital community. Um, yeah, no, they're trying to censor people who don't like them. And they're talking about the safety and health of our kids are at risk and civil rights and human rights are being threatened and marginalized and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, on and on and on it goes. Cortico's Local Voices is a new kind of conversation platform. So they're trying to get people off of Twitter and get people over there. Nope, not interested. They're paying money for studies, okay? The Institute for Rebooting Social Media is a three-year initiative at Harvard University, okay? So and they're, they're talking about disinformation, but considering the fact that it's been proven time and time again that these two have put out misinformation and flat out lied, who, I, I, I'm not interested in anything they're doing and neither is anybody else. I mean, when you get down to it, you have two proven liars who have the nerve to talk about disinformation, right? I, I mean, come on. Truth is, the two of them live in their truth, not the truth. And that's the problem. They need counseling, like serious counseling. Mm. Okay. So once again, we have so much information. What do you guys think about the articles and about the fact that there's another company that tracks algorithms that found that the Sussex squad coordinates attacks against people who speak up against the Sussexes? Interesting. 
What do you guys think about the new partnership with these? And they're doing more studies and they're going on about misline, you know, misinformation online. I, I mean, until they address the crap that they put out that was a lie, I'm just not interested. I don't know about anybody else. Don't forget to leave those comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you've already subscribed, double check to make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Getter. You can follow me on Rumble. You can email me. For those of you who've donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.